a foreman like a big sheep is. Um, uh, um, and that's hex back to the fact that I'm from New Zealand. So uh, what does foreman do? And um, I've got a lot of things to talk about. I've got about 70 slides and I'm 20 minutes. So I'm trying to go fairly quick. Um, it's about provisioning. Um, it has three main kind of features. Um, um, of these, um, provisioning is the first one, uh, configuration management is the second, and monitoring is the third. Um, talking about provisioning for a start, it's um, a network based installation. Um, so uh, if you're using the provisioning components, Foreman will um, run an automatic installer for you using Pixie Boot and um, that sort of thing. Um, it also deals with um, if you've got a, an environment like uh, Amazon where you're, um, you're managing machines, um, it will cope with provisioning machines using AMIs um, and it will customise those afterwards. So um, when you've got a list of compute resources, um, it can understand that. So this is a screenshot just so you can see a little bit of what the foreman looks like. Um, for the provisioning side of things. Um, it understands um, virtual private networks, subnets, all that sort of stuff when you're provisioning new systems. Um, just in, in the, I'm going through provisioning stuff, but I'm really here to talk about the configuration bit. Um, so it supports a big, a big range of platforms. Um, and the maturity of these support is um, getting better. Um, version before about one, it was pretty pretty rough, but it's still it's still getting better. Um, so if you if you're going to provision a machine with Foreman, it wants to know a whole bunch of information. Um, you can either enter this um, for a machine, or you can enter it through the API. Um, and this is the sort of standard sort of things you'd have to define if you're creating a machine anyway, and how big it is. Um, but it also wants to know about some puppet specific stuff like which classes, or is it in a, a group of classes? Does it have variables attached to them? Um, because its prime use after the machine is built is to manage it with Puppet. Um, so if you're doing a, uh, creating a new host, um, this is another screenshot so you can see that there's a bunch of things that'll ask you. Um, of relevance here is it'll ask you the environment. And this is your Puppet environment, and it will override whatever's in your puppet.conf file for that node. Um, so it lets, your, um, uh, it lets you control where a system is within the environment and um, which classes it belongs to for that environment. Um, if you're managing a system with uh, Foreman and you're using the provisioning components, um, so it knows about the hypervisor, you also have, I wish my network was not doing that, um, you also have um, the ability to delete machines, which will remove them off hypervisor, or reprovision them. Um, now, for most of the use cases that I use for before in our organisation and, and across our customers, we actually turn the provisioning components off because um, we're not provisioning machines um, a lot, and when we are, it might be on Amazon where we need to do auto scaling or we need to do um, smart provisioning. It doesn't involve humans deciding where they're going to get provisioned anyway. Um, so you can turn that feature off. Um, and that's how you do it. Um, for configuration management, um, this is the definition from the performance website as to what it does. But basically, it were, an external node classifier is um, the way it integrates into Puppet. So when Puppet asks a machine, um, the Puppet server says, when a, machine, uh, a, a client connects to Puppet server, it says I'm a node, it'll go off and talk to an external node classifier, which in this case is Foreman, um, to say what should this node actually be. Um, so just dealing with a bit more about Foreman is when you're defining information about systems, you can define parameters, meta information, uh, which classes and um, it also supports parameterized classes, which for people who use Puppet, you'll know what a parameterized class is, hopefully, and be using them. Um, they're really useful because um, classes that come from places like um, Puppet Forge and um, 
and GitHub uh, are often generic and then they need to be just customized a little bit for your environment and you don't want to edit the actual source code of the class. They're designed to be able to take some parameters. So when you are attaching a system um, in Foreman, um, you might be dealing with an individual system or you might be dealing with a group of systems. And so it can group them together. Um, when you're grouping a, a system together, you are defining, say, a set of a role for, um, you might be defining a web server role and attaching a bunch of classes to that web server role and parameters and things for web servers. So, yes, you can see there's a list of classes and a, a sample here I've attached some classes to a, a machine, uh, to a group, which is then applied to a machine. And groups can also apply to other groups and be nested. Um, the other um, thing that Foreman does is it lets you know what Puppet's actually been doing. So um, when a Puppet agent runs, it collects facts and it also sends back a report. Um, so reports um, are usually found in your log files, but if you're running um, Puppet dashboard or Foreman, um, those reports are also sent to um, those tools, and those tools understand them, in this case Foreman, and will show you that something happened on this machine and the output that Puppet would have when Puppet ran, and even um, the differences in files if, if Puppet's modified a file. Um, so it lets you see what's going on um, when Puppet's running, and um, as I said, Puppet collects a bunch of facts about systems, uh, Foreman stores all those facts every time a Puppet Agent runs. Um, and these facts can be queried. Um, they can also be queried from within Puppet classes that you're writing. They don't only have to be queried from the GUI um, or from the API. So they're quite useful for um, identifying what you've got and what's going on. So um, a typical view you would see when you start up Foreman um, is your host view, and this shows you, um, yeah, there's some seats over, over here. Um, this shows you your hosts and um, whether Puppet has run on them recently or not, and when it has run on them, um, if it was successful, um, you get a little green one, and if it hasn't run for a while, etc. cetera. Um, and, and a few other basic metric, better information. The other thing you see with Foreman is a dashboard of what's been going on with all your hosts. Um, and there's just keep managers happy, but also um, it lets you see if you've got a whole bunch of nodes um, out of sync. In this case, there is some, it's a demo. Um, and that means that Papa hasn't run within the time period that Papa would usually run. So the agent's turned off or something like that. Um, and it collects a bunch of statistics that normally you're monitoring systems would collect for you or inventory management, but they're kind of useful. And these statistics can also be based on um, facts that you've written. So if you've got a puppet fact that collects a metric, it can be, become a statistic. Um, so general features um, include um, a good API. It'll manage your DHCP, DNS, um, and your network boot environment for you. So you can turn those off, but you can also turn them on and have it go and talk to these systems to add entries in based on MAC address, et cetera. Um, or if you're provisioning on, say, VMware, it'll um, talk to VMware and figure out the MAC address that VMware just created and then provide the right network boot record for it. And all the other sort of enterprise things you'd expect, like LDAP. Um, so one of the, the um, features that I think is quite valuable with Foreman is it replaces, to some degree, the need for Puppet DB. If you're familiar with Puppet, you will have come across Puppet DB. Um, because you can query the foreman. Anything that the foreman's collected is queryable from within Puppet classes and from the API. And when you're querying it from within a Puppet class, you're talking to a function which runs on the server. So it doesn't run on the agent, which can collect information. So you can do things like get information about which other machines are running the web server class and then add them to a load balancer, all that sort of thing. Um, so just a, a bit of a review about 
um, if you're using Puppet without Foreman, is you're probably writing a node definition, you might be using Hira, um, and you'll be often reading log files by hand. Uh, what happens if you're running Puppet without Foreman is something like this, where your agent runs, it'll synchronize its plugins because it has to do that before it can get facts, then it'll get facts, and then it'll talk to the master where you've got a node definition. Um, compile the catalog and th uh, on the master, then apply the catalog back onto the agent. Um, so you'd have your node definition look somewhat like this. This has some interesting problems with it. One of the problems is that you're using inheritance common because you might have some common things that are shared across multiple nodes as, as a role. Um, if you include something in your node definition that uses a variable that's defined in common, it doesn't work because it, um, sorry, so the other way around. If you're trying to use something in common that uses a variable in your node definition, it interprets common first before it applies the variables. It's, and you can get yourself into a big mess as well when this grows. Um, if you're using here, it might look like this. This is the same information presented in here. And it's good if you know YAML and you want to work in um, YAML only um, without a GUI, without some sort of, um, and you have to know what these things are. You have to know to type as MySQL port. It's not, not visible to you, um, especially if you're not the person who manages those classes or wrote that class. You're a sysadmin that's looking after a bunch of other servers and you're just trying to um, configure something. So if you're using it with Foreman, um, the process is slightly different. It does the first three things the same, but then it sends, the, def what the, the node sends its name and it's um, to Foreman, and Foreman will go through and find what that node should be defined as and send it back. Um, it also sends back a report afterwards to Foreman as to what's going on. So Foreman sends through to Puppet YAML, um, that Foreman creates, it flattens it as it sends it through. So even if you've got host groups and nested stuff, it will flatten it out so you don't have any um, dependency ordering. Um, it also sends through some meta parameters like the environment and um, the owner. Um, so, that's, and so that's how they integrate together. Um, the architecture of Foreman, this, this is uh, taken from the Foreman website, this uh, picture. Um, is, is a pretty good representation, but what it's talking about here is smart proxies are a separate process that runs often on the same machine, and Foreman talks to that to do anything that's machine level, so to, to configure DHCP or to um, talk to a Puppet CA. <coughs> um, the only exception to that is the Puppet server itself talks to Foreman um, for the external node classifier. Um, and your database is usually Postgres, but it can be other things. Um, Foreman also obviously talks off to, you, to your cloud. So just a, um, a simple, um, now stepping back a bit to what might happen if you were using Foreman to manage a system. If you've got a new system, you'll, um, first thing you need to do is sign the certificate. Um, and Foreman has a smart proxy that shows you the, the CAs and you can sign, revoke them, et cetera, instead of using puppet space CA command line. Um, you then would want to attach your classes to it, uh, to a machine that you've just created. Um, before you can do that, you need to have the classes visible to you in Foreman. So Foreman will go and import these classes from the file system. You will read your Puppet master's config file to find out where they are, and then import them per environment. So you may have multiple environments and it will import them because your classes are not necessarily the same in each environment. Um, so you tell it to import your classes. You might want to check the documentation on your classes. And Puppet, if you click, um, Foreman will also provide a built-in RDoc viewer for classes that have RDoc comments in them. Um, so then you need to set up your host, um, and you're going to want to tell it some metadata, like who owns the host and which environment. Um, attach classes to host groups and um, go through um, customizing any classes you need to. How much what was that, sorry? Five minutes? So it should be all right. Um, 
So this is um, a viewing of a single host. And in, in Foreman, uh, you get a bit of a report as what's going on. And if you're choosing to edit a host, you can set some variables. Um, this is where you'd set the host group and the environment, um, puppet classes um, are here, and you can uh, just drag and drop them or, or click them um, to push them uh, between each other. You set your parameters and potentially override parameters that are set at a higher level up, like at a host group. So you might have a host group parameter that's um, NTP and then another one specific to a, a host. Um, and obviously some additional meta information, which is not required to set, but useful if you do. Um, and it, of course, keeps track of everything you're doing for, with an audit log. So a parameterized class is core to both Hira and Foreman's use of um, configuring Puppet. And basically, that means you have a class with some parameters in it, and they change the behavior of a class um, when you include it. So Foreman supports that, and you end up with the ability to go to a class, it'll find the, and show you the parameters that that class is, um, has by reading the Puppet source code, and then allow you to override a specific parameter or set it to be override, overridden. So here I'm overriding the disabled keys and I'm setting the default to be false, but I'm setting it to be true if the LSB instance fact for that machine is Ubuntu. So it's just an example here of modifying the behavior of a class um, by giving it different parameters instead of having if statements in your class um, where you don't want to change the class itself. So that's a lot. And we're just about at the end. This is a sheet. Um, the, um, just sort of cover a few tips on installing this format if you need to and what goes on. So there's an installer that does a bunch of the stuff for you, so it's pretty easy to install. You really don't need to spend too much time working with, with it to get it going. Um, and here's some, my, my tips is use the Foreman installer. Don't just install all the packages. Install the Foreman installer package and then run it. It will run Puppet to configure itself. Um, and read the instructions. They're not very hard. Um, just some notes from my experience of installing it is, oh, this applies particularly to Red Hat, is you can run it with SE Linux on, and I encourage you to do so, but check the audit logs because occasionally there's things you try to do that don't work. Um, don't change your host name afterwards because <laughs> it's going to write all your certificates and things for you with the right host name, and it just makes your life harder if you're going to do that the other way around. And yeah, be careful with the version of Ruby you're running because you can. I um I use Red Hat's software collections to run a more modern version of Ruby with Um It does work on most versions. Um, the other thing around this is um, with Puppet. Um, I would highly encourage you to go and get the Puppet from Puppet Labs. This is not Puppet Enterprise. This is their community version, packaged by Puppet Labs. Um, the reason for that is it's current, and current is a lot more better. Um, particularly versions below three are a problem. So hopefully that didn't put you guys to sleep, and we're done. Um, the, feel free to track me down if you want to. I'm happy to talk about it, and I have demos on my machine for actually at running and doing stuff. That's it. <laughs>